The first of five debates in the contest to become Indonesia's next leader is underway. Now, all three presidential candidates are battling it out on live TV right now in a bid to secure support from voters in the world's third largest democracy. And we're showing you live images from the General Elections Commission office in central Jakarta. The commission has selected 11 expert panelists to pose questions on issues of law, human rights, governance and corruption. And of these topics, corruption looms large following a series of recent graft scandals, some of which involve members of President Joko Widodo's administration. More than 200 million people are eligible to vote in the February polls. The vote will go to a second round in June. That's if none of the three candidates secures a majority. For more, CNA's Saiful Bahri Ismail joins us. He's live for us from Jakarta. Saiful, how significant are these debates in the run-up to the election next year? Well, Don, these uh, highly anticipated debates are an important element in the election process. The debates are useful for both the candidates and the voters because they are televised live on the major TV channels and also on radio and the internet. So its reach is substantial and millions of Indonesians will be able to see and hear these debates. For the candidates, the debates are another platform for them to win the hearts and minds of voters. It's another platform uh, where candidates can share their vision for the country and more specifically, the programs they would like to introduce and implement if they get elected as president. For the voters, the debates will give them a chance to evaluate the candidates and separate the contenders from the pretenders. These debates may also help undecided voters to finally choose who they should vote for. Tonight's debate will be divided into six segments. In the first segment, which is ongoing now, the presidential candidates will speak about their vision, mission and programs. In the second, third, fourth and fifth segments, the candidates will answer questions from the moderators and candidates will get a chance to ask each other questions based on the topics. In the final segment, the candidates will give their closing statements. The questions for the debate are crafted by a panel of 11 experts from various backgrounds. The panellists were isolated since Sunday Sunday to give them time to work on the questions and more importantly to ensure the questions are not leaked. The panelists are also required to sign an integ in integrity pact to ensure a fair debate and that no candidates are able to get an upper hand during the debate. So some expectations there as to what these debates will be like, especially for voters. Uh, but the elections, the General Elections Commission, uh, Saiful, has been criticised uh, for confusion over how the debate segments were actually going to be managed. Why were there last minute changes to the format? Well, the General Elections Commission, or KPU, was criticised when it announced that topics for the second and third debate sessions would be changed. The announcement was made on 6 December, that's less than a week before the start of tonight's uh, session. Originally, the second debate scheduled for 22nd December was supposed to see presidential candidates trash out issues relating to the economy, investment and trade. The third debate scheduled on 7th January would see the vice presidential candidates spar over topics concerning defence, security and international relations. Now, the topics for the dates have now been swapped. Candidates participating in the debates would also appear on stage with running mates by their side for all the sessions. The commission said this was done so that the public can assess the teamwork between presidential candidates and their running mates. Now, in previous debates, vice presidential candidates had appeared both together with their running mates and on their own. Now, observers said the perception now is that the KPU or the commission is attempting to shield vice presidential candidate and solo mayor Gibran Raka Booming Raka from attacks by his more experienced opponents on certain topics. Now, Mr. Gibran is the elder son of President Joko Widodo and Mr. Gibran's candidacy is already plagued with controversies. His nomination was based on a constitutional court ruling that was formally declared unethical because the court was at the time led by his uncle Anwar Usman. The court ruled that the 40-year-old age limit for election contenders does not apply to regional heads in a clear attempt to remove the existing legal barriers for Mr. Gibran to contest the election. Saiful, thank you for that. Saiful Bahri Ismail, the reporting for us live from Jakarta.